Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is the fallacy of absence. Now, the opposite of war isn't peace, it's creation. The fallacy of absence can take the form of a fallacy of equivocation, which fails to distinguish between the lack of something and the opposite or negation of something, or it can be described as a false dichotomy, assuming that one must either affirm a proposition or deny it, ignoring the possibility of lacking a belief about it. Basically, the fallacy of absence is a confusion between zero and a negative number. It's a confusion between a lack of something and a loss of something. We'll take a look at some examples to explain that a little bit more in a sec, but for now, so the fallacy of absence involves an equivocation between the lack of a property and the negation of that property. The quote from Rent exemplifies this. If war is a destructive force, then peace is not the opposite of war, it is the absence of war. Creation, which undoes the acts of war, is in fact the opposite. There are many terms that you might think of this in. Having money and being broke are not opposites. Rather, being broke is simply the absence of money, and being broke is importantly distinct from being in debt, which is the opposite, opposite of having money. Regardless of what you consider the true opposite, the fallacy occurs when you equivocate the, equivocate the lack of something with a negation The fallacy occurs sometimes with respect to belief. Someone might claim that if you don't believe P, you must believe not P. However, this is clearly false. You might never have thought of either P or not P, or you might suspend judgment on them both. For example, someone that claimed that because you do not believe there is life in other galaxies, you must believe that such life is impossible, or that there is certainly no life in any other galaxies. However, this is a false dichotomy. You might simply not believe either proposition, either the proposition or its denial, because you just don't know if there's life in other galaxies. Let's take a look at some examples. So, the premise, Johnny has no money, therefore John's worth is zero dollars. I don't know why I called him Johnny. Um, fallacious, because John could be in debt simply because he has no money doesn't mean that he doesn't also have a negative amount of money. Lacking a positive quantity does not imply the corresponding negative quantity is missing as well. The war lasted 10 years, but was followed by 10 years of peace. Therefore, the country has reversed all the effects of the war and returned to a state it was in before the war. While possible, this is an invalid argument, because peace is not construction. If we said the country had, for those 10 years, successfully rebuilt everything that the war had destroyed, that would be the opposite of the war. Peace is simply the absence of the war, not a reversal of its effects, going to our original quote. Aisha does not believe that the number of living beings on Earth right now is odd. Therefore, Aisha must believe that the number of living beings on Earth right now is even. Once again, fallacious, because Aisha might not have any belief as to the number of beings on Earth particularly because it's unlikely that she could have a justified belief about that, knowing either that it is odd or it is even. So it's very likely she would suspend belief on either proposition. Mohammed does not believe that God exists. Therefore, Mohammed believes that God does not exist. Clearly fallacious because Mohammed could believe neither proposition. As alluded to in the final example, this fallacy is often committed by theists against atheists. Being a skeptical atheist does not imply belief in the claim that God does not exist, nor does it imply a belief in metaphysical materialism, scientific realism, or moral relativism. Frequently, theists dispute atheism by arguing against beliefs such as materialism, relativism, realism, or the claim that God does not exist, none of which are a logical consequence of the lack of belief in God. Simply because one denies spiritualism, or lacks a belief in spiritualism, or lacks a belief in theism, it does not imply that one embraces the negation of that. One could simply lack a belief and be a skeptic. 
What situations have you seen people deploy the fallacy of absence in? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Hit subscribe and the notification bell if you like this video and you want to see more like it. Watch this video and more here at Pernades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.